Hey guys, it's All Up Blitzel here, and today I'm with I'm back with a fun new take on Arceus Duraladon. This is a list I got top 16 at the Vancouver Regional Championships. And as you probably noticed, we play some unconventional cards. We are featuring a 1-1 line of Flying Pikachu and 4-1 of Stadiums. So this is a very funny new take on Arceus Duraladon. Arceus Duraladon is one of the more boring decks in format. It really has not changed very much at all since the start of the metagame. This is like a refreshing take, and, it, and it's kind of cool to see... Um, I wanted to call this deck a meme deck, but just sort of a, a, a funny take on a deck do well in a, a tournament. This will function your same um, as any other Arceus Duraladon deck, except we do have that Flying Pikachu to hopefully solidify the Reggies and Flying P or, and um, Lost Box matchup, which I think it does quite effectively. It already has that synergy with the Big Parasol. And the one of Stadiums are... Um, each of them have a nice specific use. Uh, Lost City is great against the Lost Box. Temple of Sinnoh against Lugia. Training Courts is pretty good in general. A Collapse Stadium for Reggies. And even uh, OK in spots against uh, Mew and Lugia. Other than that, uh, uh, our typical RCs to on list. Uh, nothing else to see here. Um, I'm sorry about not having a Vancouver video today. I was hoping to have one. Uh, hoping they would have a list published by now, but they do not. So hopefully I'll have it by tomorrow morning. As of recording, they still don't have lists published yet. So um, hopefully by Wednesday at the very latest. But um, I hope you guys enjoy the battles. All right, we're getting into our first game here. Losing the, the coin flip, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, Archie Drawn really loves to go first. If he can't go first, it's really um, not going to be favored into most matchups, I would say. So Mulliganing right off the bat is not good. Opening Duraladon is never good, and this hand is nothing spectacular. And we're against Lost Zone Box. So, this is actually where we want to use Flying Pikachu, but unfortunately, we open our Duraladon. Our Duraladon's not a bad attacker by any stretch, but it's still um, not our preferred way to go about things. So, I'm going to go for that Flower Selecting. Um, we still don't know what build of Lost Box. I mean, it could still be Guja. Um, there's a Lightning Energy going down, so it's uh, either Amazing Rare Raikou or the Rayquaza and Raikou build, or it just could be a straight like, Dragonite Kyogre build. So there's a Flower Selecting, uh, the Comfy into the Lost Zone, an Oranguru, and a Pass. So we top to find Pikachu, so this is pretty interesting. I'm going to attach, I think Gear, no Marnie, I would prefer to Marnie, but we'll just switch and then research. And, okay, I'm gonna think Quick Ball for this Arceus. I'll get rid of a double turbo. We already have two double turbos in hand. So we'll grab the Arceus, and the Flying Pichu VMAX is prized. Dang it, we committed to that, um, to that, this win condition, and of course it's not going to work out for us, so. Darn, this is, this is sort of scuffed now, but we will, we'll do our best here. So there is a Comfey. So if, the, if this RC gets one shot, we are not in a very good spot. I'd really like to get a uh, Trinity Charge off of this, at least a little bit of Duraladon. So there's another Flower Selecting. If they can get all the way to seven, we're, we're, we're in big trouble. A Water getting lost soon. Um, I can sail cards, like if they have a Dragonite, or um, I don't really think anything other than Dragonite can one shot us. Let's we'll, we'll say like Snorlax, Belt, Zigzagoon. There is another Comfey getting benched. So their hand is lacking Chorus, obviously. So there's another Flower Selecting. Mirage Gate, always like to see those get Lost Zoned. And there's a Sableye on the bench and a Pass. So my opponent is sort of, oh, that was a weird hand. Ugh, neither of these supporters are helpful. We don't want Mustard or, so I guess I'll grab the Boss Sorters. I'll put the Lightning on the Pika and the two other energies on the Duraludon, hoping that I can take my uh, my RC, or my uh, Flying Pikachu off my first prize, that would be very nice. So my hunt is up to six now, I believe. There's an escape rope. We'll go into the Duraludon. Don't really want to put my Pikachu in harm's way, especially if they're playing Raikou or some other electric attacker that could easily one-shot it. But our hand's quite weak, so we're really hoping that they do not one-shot this Duraludon. So our flower selecting. There's a Zekron getting lost zoned. Just a thing that would have uh, been very good into my Flying Pikachu. And then an Oranguru. So, do they have anything? Are they just still missing chorus? Is it like conceal cards? Why do they conceal card? Why do they guru before the conceal cards? They must have hit the capture off the conceal or off the permit wisdom. Or they just miss sequence things, but either way, uh so of insufficiency from my opponent. Or in inefficiency. <laughs> I cannot talk today. So does my opponent even have a chorus? Are they still just 20 cards off in deck without playing a chorus? It's sort of 
mind-boggling. There is an ordinary rod, then a couple energies back in, so you're going to get Mirage Gate back into play. And this Duraludon might be going down then, which is not good for us. Yep, Bird Keeper. Yep, the Duraludon will be hitting the discard pile. There's another Mirage Gate. But they only have one gate left now, so that's that, that's something. Sky Seal Stone. Well, why did they do that? They just wasted their V-Star power. Uh, I think they forgot to read what Sky Seal Stone does. Uh, I should have part of the Flying Pikachu for the free retreat, but we're fine. I also should have attached that Parasol, uh, but so now we're just going to punch into this Dragonite with a Trinity Nova. I don't want to Starbirth just yet, and I because I don't feel very pressured now that they have a Sky Seal Stone on instead of a Choice Belt. I will accelerate uh, a Fighting and two Metals. I still have a Court if I wanted to have another Duraludon, but I'm sort of just banking on hitting the Pika off the prizes. But we at least can thin out the deck a little bit. And if we can get the Flying Pika like solo in the actual spot, we we're pretty much just going to win. Opponent finally finds a Chorus. I wonder if they prize like multiple Choruses. Definitely would explain how, why things were so difficult for them. So I don't really know what they can do. I guess a rope to KO my Flying Pikachu would be pretty good for, for them. But other than that, um, a Lossy coming down from us is going to be very good. Like a loss in this Dragonite, so they can't use it again with an ordinary rod. I was really hoping that, that this deck would make uh, top eight and like even go deeper into Van Vancouver, but I uh, had a very poor run against Lugia. Uh, once again, Lugia showed its dominance. I believe it was the same 60 that Andrew uh, just won Knoxville with. So it's it re I really cements Lugia as the greatest deck of all time, or the most dominant deck in this particular format. Like I don't know if Lugia will be able to. There's no way that Lugia can keep up this dominant post rotation, but I think that it's. It's just going. It, I, I, it, it, Silver Tempest format Lugia is one of the best decks ever. I think I'm not going out on a limb by by, by saying that, because I, I cannot recall a deck that won literally everything and was this like six of the top eight placements like consistently every single weekend. But I don't feel like, it doesn't feel as gross to play against Lugia as it did against ADP just because like losing to like, ADP it felt like you never had a chance and we do the final off, off the second prize like if, if you just missed one turn your game was basically over and at least Lugia is a little more interactive than that I'm not saying Lugia is a fair and balanced deck it definitely is not but I think things will get better post rotation will not have quite as um, overpowered attackers to mess around with but between the attackers and the one-shot capability of the UV star so easily on, on the second turn of the game, also it won't have quite as uh, good searchability to those Archeops. So um, our RCs will, will be going down, but we just get, get that solo flying Pikachu, and this should be a wrap. But, um, unless my opponent has, like, uh, I don't know, like they had a Lost Vacuum and could Lost Zone my uh, Parasol and then could start swinging with Lost Mine. But I don't think they probably have that. So a flying Pikachu, incense the, the deck out, and then we'll just max balloon and take the, the knockout. So if our opponent does not concede here, they might have a, a win condition. Uh, but yeah, if we get to shoot off the flying Pikachu play, definitely pretty scuffed the way we got there. And our opponent does indeed concede. So winning the coin flip the, the second game, as I said in the, before the first game, winning the coin flip is super duper important with RC Duraludon. Like we want to be able to Trinity Nova Get that first turn of evolving. Raikou in the active spot means Lugia V Star. And I mean, it could be Lost in Box too, but seeing that they have Lugia coin and sleeves and deck box, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's, it's, it's Lugia. Uh, I actually could muster next turn. I have the, the, the hand to do it, so I think that's going to be my play. So we're using Lugia on the bench. But yeah, like I was saying, I th and I, like, I'm definitely going to reinforce in my um, Vancouver video. Lugia V-Star is truly one of the best decks ever. It's, it doesn't feel like the most oppressive deck ever to face. There have been a lot more, like, especially like some expanded lock decks or um, even ADP or some of those oppressive decks ever to face. Lugia at least feels like you can play the game against it. It's It just has so many options that I also think it's one of the more fun to play BDIFs ever because it has so many more options than most other decks in format, but... 
I'm curious to hear what you guys think about, about Lugia. Like, I did a video uh, trying to break down why Lugia is so good. And I, I truly think that it's it's plethora of attackers and the easy, or just the relative ease to get Arceus, Archeops into the discard pile is what makes it so overpowered. That if, if it was difficult to get turned to double Archeops, or it was difficult, or we didn't have Raikou and Yveltal and Radiant Charizard, or Lugia just simply couldn't hit for 310, <laughs> Then I think we have a different story, but I think that narrative might change like post rotation. Do I get another fighting entity? It's actually so bad. Um, but I, 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 let me know in the comments. Can you guys, in, in, in your opinion, is Lugia the best deck of all time? I, I mean, in my opinion, it is. And I've been playing the game for a long time, but those early dark days, like when. Uh, Dark Rite EX just came out and P Pokemon Catcher w was everywhere. Uh, the before the Pokemon Catcher Arata, um, that's definitely considered one of, the, one of the best decks of all time. Like what was that 2012 Worlds? I can't remember what year it was exactly that it just completely dominated. That was one of the most dominant decks of all time. But I, I'm just like, in recent memory, I don't think there's anything that's been con as consistently great as Lugia, and. Maybe the narrative with ADP would be a, a, a bit different had the pandemic not wiped out a majority of its lifetime. Uh, at least its, it's whole, basically its whole existence with, with Zation was wiped out, which it was. That was not a, a very fun time to be playing Pokemon cards. And I know a, a lot of the cards printed in Scarlet and Violet, for the most part, are relatively underpowered cards. And while those cards will not be uh, super playable and standard for the foreseeable future. Um, I think it does bode well for the future of the game, not having just uh, three turn games or having just uh, hopefully less games that are decided by whoever wins the coin flip, because standard right now just feels like if I lose the coin flip, I'm just so significantly disadvantaged. And I'm me and the community, we're all still waiting for that fabled comeback card that, remember in the world's trailer that said uh, Scarlet Violet's theme will be comebacks? I haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> um, and reprint would, would be nice. A reset stamp reprint would be pretty cool. Um, trying to think of what other cards. I mean, like, even like Headringer. A like Headringer for Roblox Pokemon would be really cool. Just like some way to go. Like just. All right, I'm going to gust and kill that Yvelso. My opponent misplayed very badly by dropping that. If, if they... If they don't drop that, I'm feeling like I'm a, loss worse, a lot worse spot. I probably Gus and KO and Archeops instead, so they can't get it out all, all in one turn. But yeah, that was definitely a misplay by my opponent, because if Yveltal is their win condition, now they don't have a way to get through two Duraludons in, in all likelihood. Cologne, oh no. So they did have a way to win the game. If they just did not finish that Yveltal, they win this game. So, even though my Duraludon went down and I have seemingly nothing on board here, I still think I'm fine just because my opponent's Yveltal is gone. Like, normally Yveltal Vacuum would win them the game. But, I don't think they, they have that. They misplayed and dropped it early, so I just need to find my Training Court as my other all three Fightings are down. But, as soon as I find those cards, we will win. It's just going to take me a little bit to, to get there. But, like I was, I was saying that, well... Um, I, I just like some comeback cards coming back to the game. Like, just watching that caster show match, that was 2013 Worlds, where it was uh, TDK against uh, Rayquaza Eels. It was just like, uh, it was Kyle Sablehouse against Chip Ritchie, and Chip got down, and he's on four or five prizes, but he played an N and completely changed the tide of the game. And, like, you almost probably get it because it's been so long since we've had, like, Reset Stamp wasn't even that long ago, and, like, that was just, like, such a... A different I don't know, like experience that's like what standard and even the Pokemon TCG has been at you know a long time like it's just very rare to see if you get up four or five prizes even if you t take the first knockout most of the time you're going to win the game in 2023 standard format so I think it would it'd just be nice to see an end reprint or some sort of card with a similar effect just I I want the game to be, to be balanced. The, this, well, I don't think this is the worst standard format. I think the Lost Origin format was was pretty bad too. I mean, the, the, the formats have been. I think Brilliant Stars uh, was a really good format. I might be biased because I did pretty well with, uh, in that format. Astral was a step down, but it was still good. 
And then Lost Origin was really bad. Uh, this format's really bad. And I mean, I think the Fusion Strike meta was really bad. Evolving Skies was okay. Nothing really super great. Like, there... Like the best meta, at least in recent memory, in, in my opinion, was the uh, Brilliant Stars meta. It's because Arceus, well, it was pretty much everywhere in every deck. There were so many different ways to play Arceus. Like even Urshifu was was good. Um, there were like even solid single prize decks, like that Intellion Bird Box. Even like the, Mew was still viable. I think that th that format was one of the more balanced ones we've seen in a very long time. That um, I, but then, yeah, these formats just, I think that just Sableye Lost Zone Box is, is, is so toxic for a standard format because it just gatekeeps every other single prize deck. And it's only going to get worse after the rotation once every deck loses, um, like Parasol, um, and just ways to, to deal with, with Lost Mine. That it can just bully those single prize Pokemon that you're trying to evolve into your EXs or in, in, into your single prize Pokemon. And it's, it's always going to be the, the king of single prizers. And, like, in, in the past, it always was, like, the, the fastest single prizer uh, sort of won out and was the, the dominant single prize deck. And that was Rapid Mally for a long time. There was, like, spread decks like Weezing and Passimian and stuff like that before that. Or, like, Grand Bull that, like, the, the, the king of single prizers for each a bit. But, like, Lost in Box, as long as Save Life, Chorus, Mirage Gate... Comfey, all of those are legal. I, I, it's gonna be pretty difficult for uh, a loss in box not to be the, the the king of single prizers, just because of how a, like turn one pressure with Cramorant, multi prize potential with Radiant Greninja and, and Sableye. It's gonna be pretty tough for any other deck to uh, to take that crown away. And we're gonna t take this game. We just kind of had to uh, wait and, and see and, and draw that training court and we can just go boss boss and win the game i the reason i didn't play the the marnie this whole time is because i wanted it in case um training court with my last card in deck and then i wouldn't have decked out and i just wanted to have that extra insurance so this is a uh, yoshi tracker actually um you see him in um tr tr tricky gyms twitch chat a lot and he's a prominent glc player so always funny I faced him a couple times in GLC tournaments, and yeah, so I think they're playing Mew, which is a good matchup for us. We're going first with his hand, a double Duraludon. It's just gross. So we're going to pass. Hopefully, I'm like hoping I get judged because I don't want to research both these Duraludons. Triple Genesect. My goodness. This is quite the hand. Man, a Mew player's dream. Like, four basic Pokemon without a single battle VIP pass. That is pretty darn good. So there's there's the judge. Thank you. I did not want it to discard those Duraludons. So, oof. This hand's really bad, too. I would much rather discard two Duraludons than have a straight brick. These have a counter stadium if they do drop the pass to peak. We just need to find... A straw supporter, incense, ultra ball, something to get going. They're definitely getting a lot going on their side of the board. Two choice belts. The only bad part about my opponent's setup is that they opened Oracoria. Oh dear. We're gonna get donked, aren't we? I'm just gonna gust the Genesect, drop the Temple of Sinnoh, and Trinity Charge that lightning energy, and I guess just hope for the best. And if they, they need to switch. Stadium Bump and Mewi Max. There's the Mewi Max. All right, Genesect for three right off the bat. That's good. That means their hand, they're missing all three of those pieces. Of, uh, Power Tablet does not help them get their Uva's Arena. That's going to get them real deep into the deck. Darn, this is going to be too too slow here. Just did not draw well enough off of that judge. I'm sorry, I cannot talk very well. Oh my goodness, they're going to get five off the Genesect, but they still have not played a single one of their needed pieces. They need Switch, Double Turbo, and a Stadium Bump. So three cards, one Genesect left after this. There's a Quick Ball. Uh, so do they have any None of those pieces yet? That means we're going to be uh, still living this turn miraculously. 
uh, past the peak and a pass. Oh my goodness. No, we can't even capitalize on my opponents. So I'm just going to power edge. Maybe my opponent has no way to uh, bump this path and they're just breaking out. Okay, there's a judge r right off the rip. At least this might get us out of our brick. Sort of. Okay, we're still alive. They attach retreat and pass. Wouldn't it be better to attach to Mew there? I'm going to bench... Okay, they spent one tablet. I'm going to bench the Arceus V and then punch for 160. Alright, we have sort of stabilized here. Like, now we are in the more dominant position, which is hilarious. Because just a couple turns ago, we were just a couple cards away from, from losing. And now this path to the peak is really uh, doing more damage to my opponent than it is to me. So, does my opponent have a stadium bump? No, they do not. I am not drawing anything either, but I can turn Nova for this knockout. And take three, three prizes. And now my opponent cannot take this Arceus out. We can just go boss boss and win this game. So, pretty, pretty funny game. So, does my opponent have anything at all? Or is this going to be... There's a Chromatic. Hit its head. So, they're not dead yet. They still have something. So this is going to find a stadium or a lost vacuum. Also a boss. There's a tablet. So they are one more damage modifier to take this knockout. There's a double turbo. A Roxanne. That's kind of, uh, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, it was kind of bad. We had a drought on hand. We had a Marnie. Oof, we draw research though. Our deck was massive, but we still draw a research. So they're going to take this knockout, which is Anfam Path to the Peak. So I'm betting they're thinking about how there's no way I draw out of this. My deck is huge. And they just path me, Roxanne me. And then we're going to put this Pokey Gear. I'm not going to grab anything. I don't want to discard either of these cards. And then we're going to research. Ugh, I wanted to find a Duralit on V. Do I even counter this stadium? Because I could counter the stadium just to Starbirth, but I don't really feel threatened. And if I drop something else, that does open up my opponent to be able to go uh, boss KO, um, Echoing Horn, boss win. So, and they don't even have enough tablets to win the game. And Silene's already down, so I think I'm fine. I don't need to bench anything else. And I'm just going to... So there's one power tablet for a Seal Stone. I have four cards left in deck. There's a Star Alchemy. So what do they have going here? A pal pad. It's like, but I put the Silene back, so they need one heads here to win the game. I just, I did not do this right. <laughs> I should have benched another Arceus. There's a Parasol. Come on, double tails. Oh man, I battled back in this game only to blow it here at the end. Yep, one heads. This is such a demoralizing way to lose. Oh man, I thought we had it, but darn it. They're gonna come up just short. I, uh, man, I think I, if I just bench that RC as an accelerator energy to it, I probably just win. But oh well. That's all I got for RCS Duraludon. Those were some pretty scuffed games, but I gotta show off the Flying Pikachu package. I gotta show off the Duraludon part of the deck. And I gotta show off how scuffed RCS Duraludon is. So, um, I'm pretty happy with all three of those games. Once again, I do apologize for not having my Vancouver video up yet, like I promised yesterday. Hopefully I can have that up tomorrow morning. Um, if not, uh, stay, uh, stay tuned on my community tab. I should post an update later tonight if that does not happen. But um, very funny deck. If you're an Arceus Duraludon player, I definitely recommend checking this one out. As always, the PTCJ import is in the description below, as is my email. If you ever need to uh, shoot me a question or anything like that, uh, no, just send me an email. I have no problem. So um, any, any decks from Vancouver you'd like me to try out, I'll leave them in the comments section. And I'll get to them as, as soon as I can. And once again, you guys are the absolute best. And I'm going to keep working hard, bringing this to daily content. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. It's all Blitzo, and I'll see you tomorrow.